Kyler Gordon talks about the Chicago Bears trying to force more turnovers heading into next season, something that they were already one of the better teams at the league at doing last season. We're also going to look at Matt Eberflus' future, and Rich Eisen picks the Chicago Bears as an underdog to make it to the NFC title game. We're talking about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Terry Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. You guys know we've been doing recaps every night as far as takeaways from training camp for that day. And, you know, we still get more trickle in and out of training camp after that point in time. And while the battle between the offense and defense has been one of the focuses here in training camp, you get the offense winning one day, the, the defense winning one day, and it's just really building that environment of ironing sharpens iron. But one of the things that you also want to see is how are you going to build off what you did last season? And Kyler Gordon talked about how the Bears are trying to build off what they were last season. Keep in mind, the Chicago Bears last season had 28 takeaways, which was tied for fifth most in the NFL. And they tied for the most interceptions at 22 with the San Francisco 49ers as well. But Kyler Gordon saying this, we definitely compete to see who's going to have the most turnovers, who's going to have the most pass breakups. It's always a constant competition who is going to make the next play. As you see, our defense has a lot of energy. So it would be for, uh, from the left corner to the right corner to the mic to the D lineman. It just bounces all over. The Bears being one of the teams that were best at forcing takeaways last season it's something that we don't really talk a lot about with the Chicago Bears team. We, of course, talk about how we got more pressure on the quarterback after the addition of Montez Sweat. Talk about the, the coverage and how well they played. But forcing takeaways is something that's special. And we actually had a voicemail not too long ago. Somebody asked, could the Chicago Bears be one of the better scoring defenses in the, in the NFL as well? And while you don't have to necessarily score to get takeaways, I think getting takeaways is the most important thing. You don't necessarily have to turn that into touchdowns. Of course, that helps, right? If you can score points with your defense, that definitely helps what you're trying to do here. But overall, if you just keep seeing that growth and development uh, from this defense and they can turn something that they were already good into last season and make it even stronger, right, while building on top of the things that they did last season as well, that's what you want to see from this defense. And overall, as much uh, as the offense is going to get talked about because the new acquisitions of all the new talent there, um, you know, getting that offense to being in a place that the Bears offense really hasn't been, make no mistake about it. The Bears always, when the Bears are good, the defense is good as well. And so the defense is going to be a big part of the Chicago Bears team being a better uh, team that can push for a playoff spot. And we even got the last topic of the day. We're going to talk about somebody picking the Chicago Bears to be an underdog to make it to the NFC title game, which is still crazy to me, right? But you just want to see that continued development. And so. Listen, I love the fact that in training camp right now, the Bears are also having fun, right? And that's something as well that there is something to that, right? You don't want the fun to override the execution and going through the process and how you're going to develop. But having a, de a, a defense, especially that's having fun out there, that is something special. And so uh, you want your defense to have fun, taking away the confidence and the momentum of opposing offenses. And so this is a talented, talented defensive squad. And while, you know, we've been uh, uh, guilty of it, too, here at Chicago Bears Central, right, is talking so much about the offense and how exciting that offense can be. Make no mistake about it. This could be a very, very fun defense next season, especially if we get that opposite edge or have that growth from Javon Dexter. More on that in a second. Um, if we have that, it just goes so far into this Bears team being just a much better squad than what we dealt with last year. We talk a lot about it here. Ten wins. That's what we've gotten to talk about in the almost three years of this of this of this show being a thing. It's ten wins, and the Bears have the chance of almost doubling that next year alone by what they're doing. And so overall, let's hope that that continues for the Chicago Bears team. Um, I love hearing what we're hearing so far from the defense making in competition, having the you know the pride as far as going at the offense and the offense coming back at them. And so you know, hearing even last, last that yesterday's practice was a really good one for the offense, maybe even Caleb Williams best and the chemistry between him and like Rome and, and Tyler Scott growing, the defense still got the last laugh in that. And so make no mistake about it. We know that we want to see a more modern offense from this team because we just haven't consistently seen that from this Bears team. Before the Bears to be good, you also can't deny our history. And that comes with the history of having a great defense. And let's hope if we this defense can be top 10, top five. That is a great defense. And then you still want that offense that can be exciting as well 
to continue to build off that. And let's hope that the Chicago Bears are going into that direction. Now, with that said, part of what's going to help the, the, the defense, of course, going in that direction is the, the development of the young guys. And one of the young guys who has gotten the most talk about and has really still been surprising a lot of people from pundits to coverage to coaches, that's Javon Dexter. And Javon Dexter is just somebody who the Bears are really buying in on the confidence there when they went, they did not go out and get another three tech. And for the, the, a lot talked about the shape that he came into training camp with. And he talked about this himself saying, I just tried to get in marathon shape. I've noticed that good ones can do it, uh, do it one or two plays, but the ones that uh, go down as great ones are consistent in being able to play first through the fourth quarter. Uh, when asked about the most difficult thing to eliminate from his diet, he said this, I would say that late night snack. I was just like, man, one honey bun won't hurt me, but I cut that out and now I feel a lot better. When asked about what's difference with his with his performance on the field and his quickness, Javon Dexter said this. It's a lot different. Being leaner helps me get off the ball faster. Getting leaner helps me penetrate faster. A lot of those things, like the three technique roll, I can do a little easier because my body is allowing me to do it. And that is a player that when you talk about the growth from the first to the second year, right? One of the things that people talked about the most that was kind of limiting Javon Dexter initially in around this time last year in training camp was his get-off ability. And so now the fact that he is leaner, he has strengthened but gotten leaner at the same time, that is something that is going to help this young man tremendously, and the Bears need that, especially if they don't go out and get another a at edge. I know Jacob Martin's having a good uh, a good training camp so far. We know what Demarcus Walker can bring. We know what we hope Austin Booker is going to eventually b- bring to this team as well. But Matt Eberflus has, has always said since day one, the three technique is one of the most important roles in his defensive scheme. And the fact is that, uh, you know, we always go to the Bears first big signing was Larry Ogunjobi. Now that deal ended up falling through, but they did sign him to a contract. And that was because of what that would do to Matt Eberflus' system, how important that three tech was to Matt Eberflus' system. So when it comes down to it, you want if, if Javon Dexter hits this this leap that people are talking about, him him even thinking about, he sa- him saying that, I want my name to be on one of those walls when you walk in, talking about Hallis Hall. Like, that all says the same thing. Javon Dexter wants to be great. Now, the desire to be great and the execution to be great can be very different things, but he has that desire to be great, and he's put in that work this offseason. And if that work continues to pay off, and pay off in the sense that we end up getting a Javon Dexter that is getting to the quarterback that's causing disruption, that's making it easy easier on his edges to get pressure out from the, from the outside. I tell you what, man, this could be a really big season for Javon Dexter. And, you know, I'm going to wait and see how, how it can, what it can mean ultimately for Javon Dexter and how much it, he, he keeps this up once the football pads are on, right? But, you know, when you talk about the, the, the names in the hallway, the interest of Hallis Hall, you're talking about Sid Luckman, Dick Buckets, Walter Payton, uh, Gail Sayers, Steve McMichael, right, who is going into the Hall of Fame this year, had 95 career sacks. Dan Hampton, right, 82 sacks. You're talking about if Javon Dexter's saying he wants one of his, he wants his names to be one of the ones on that wall, that doesn't just come with being a good Chicago Bear. That comes with being a great NFL player. And so if Javon Dexter is putting in that work and he's trying to get there and do what he can, Hey, listen, that's what you want to hear from him. And hearing that him, Zach Pickens, right, that they are still impressing in camp. Even heard that Dominique Robinson is playing on the interior defensive line, which that still is something that surprised me when we talked about it yesterday. But overall, you know, Javon is a hugely important piece to what this team is doing uh, this year because you got Andrew Billings. We know who Andrew is. He's not all of a sudden going to become a three-tech. You're looking at Javon Dexter to be that three tech, and don't forget who the Bears passed up on, who could have been a three tech in this in this defense. Yeah, to get to get Darnell right, but then they still got Javon Dexter, and they felt confident in what he's going to be able to br- bring and be for this team ultimately. So we're looking at Javon Dexter. I hope he has a really big season, and I hope he has a season where we're not starting to look at Javon Dexter and, as one of those ones. To so to say, I stole that from Steve-O, who I know Steve didn't invent that, but he was the first person I heard say it. Yeah, I'm old. It is what it is. But if uh, he can be one of those ones, then that goes a long way for the Chicago Bears. Now, in talking about this growth, the development, the defense, the offense, everything, one of the people that needed to develop as well, along, right along with everybody else, I said is Matt Eberflus. Now, got something interesting on notes on Matt Eberflus. Now, Matt Eberflus is a 9-1 to favorite to be coach of the year. He's also a seven to one favorite to be the first coach fired as well. And that's the interesting place and dynamic that Matt Eberflus has as being the head coach of the Chicago Bears. 
there are people that do believe that this team is going to be good. And hearing that he could be the nine that he's the nine and one voting favorite to be coach of the year, that does say a lot. Then on top of that, uh, like the fact that people think he could be one of the first ones fired, that says a lot as well. I think about now that this place is this this roster is in a place where you need to start winning. What have I been saying? How have I worded it? We're no longer rebuilding. We're building, but wins are the most important thing right now. And because of that, that does put a different spotlight on Matt Eberflus. Now, I'm still on record, and that has not changed, that I don't see Matt Eberflus getting fired this season unless things go horribly, horribly wrong. But I think that either way, Matt Eberflus is going to get an opportunity to stay on that last year of his deal, which is next season, not this season coming up. And so because of that, and we're going to see. And don't get don't, – uh, listen. The public view on Matt Eberflus as well, with having hard knocks there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do something for the Chicago Bears overall, but Matt Eberflus also, because if you have that hard knocks, you're getting extra awareness around, and if the Bears do end up putting together some type of playoff run or something like that, God forbid they make it to the NFC Championship, which Rich Eisen thinks we may do. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but if they do, that is going to increase his chances of being coach of the year, but it also could increase his chances to maybe be fired or the or the the voices calling for him to be fired to be louder, per se. I don't know how much that sways Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren. But, you know, when you when when a team has to have three days of deliberation to decide if you're going to keep your job or not and Ryan Poles goes to bat for you, that does give a lot of credence to the fact that he could be on a hot seat. Now, I don't personally think that, but we need to see that that development from Matt Eberfuss. And I'll give him this. If nothing else so far in training camp, the way that he has handled the media through these press conferences since the end of the season to now has tremendously gotten better. He seems like he has more confidence. He understands better how to how to manage and what they're trying to how, how to give answers and not really allude to stuff, but also take accountability. He seems like he's mastering that part a little bit more and he's learning the job on the fly. He was a rookie head coach, and I think sometimes we can forget that because of how much we want this team to win and we want to see this team succeed. But Matt Eberflus is going and growing as well, right along with everybody else. And so the development of Eberflus, now with a coaching staff that hopefully is going to help better support him, have that better uh, situational awareness that I always like to talk about when it comes to things that he's missing as a head coach, all those things tremendously can help him be in the right situation and the right spot. And let's hope that we get that overall from Matt Eberflus as well this year. And I think that there's enough signs to point to that may be coming, and we'll see. But all right, now, I do want to talk about this clip from Rich Eisen in which he says that the Bears could be sleepers to make it to the NFC Championship game. And I'm not going to lie to you. Um, listen, let's go ahead and play the clip here. Need one more? All right, we'll get one All right, here's the one more. Nobody's sleeping on the team. But they're potentially sleeping on how far they can go. The one more sleeper team of 2024 is the Chicago Bears making it to the NFC Championship game. <laughs> oh, my man. So what you're talking Gosh, about and, the, and why I put him there is because that's one rung up the playoff ladder than C.J. Stroud made last year. And if you're talking about strides by a rookie quarterback, and that is the bar that C.J. Stroud set last year, a unicorn type stuff. If Caleb Williams can do that and the defense can play the way that they played and the offense can start cooking with Caleb Williams, the Bears making the NFC Championship game is the sleeper team that I'm adding to this mix. The Bears. Nobody's the sleeping, Bears. obviously, on the Bears. They're on hard knocks. Everybody's going to be talking yeah, about them. Talk, um, crazy. But making it as far as I just threw out there, I don't think people are talking about that. All right. So you guys heard the clip, and here's what I'll say to this. And I'm going to leave it here. If this Bears team exceeds expectations to the point that they are getting, I, I would even say one playoff win completely changes to me the perspective that a lot of people are going to have on the Chicago Bears and what they're able to accomplish long term, both with Kayla Williams, with, under Matt Eberflus, everything. But if this team gets to the point to where they're either a game out or they get to the NFC Championship game, you might as well ride it home. Bears fans are going to go berserk in, in a positive way. That whole offseason, even if they lose in the NFC, even if they get blown out in the NFC Championship game, do you know how crazy it's going to be around Bears fandom if that happens, considering the shit that we've been through the last few years, the last decade, the last 30 years for some, for some people? Like, do you understand that? And so Eisen picking the Chicago Bears and saying the Chicago Bears are a sleeper, I think was very targeted in the sense that, we know the talent that we have on paper, and this is some great talent, and I think people are still a little bit hesitant to admit that the Bears' talent on paper 
is right up there with anybody else in the NFC North. Right up there with almost anybody else in the NFC. But the fact of the matter is we don't get the benefit of the doubt because we got a rookie quarterback. The Bears haven't done it. Uh, anytime the Bears have had talent, it almost seems to go left, right? So the Bears aren't getting the benefit of the doubt. But if almost any other team in the NFC had the talent on both sides of the ball that the Chicago Bears had, regardless of how last season was well, well, how strongly our defense finished last season, all those things would still, uh, though uh, if it was another team, they would be getting so much more attention as far as, hey, we think this team could really make a move in the right direction and do some things. But because it is the Bears, and it's due to their own fault as far as where and how this franchise has operated for years, this is now where we sit as a franchise. But let's be clear here. If the Bears, if the do you know, we, got, we get live for random Thursday games here at Chicago Bears Central. Do you know how crazy it will be if the Bears make it to the NFC Championship? You ain't even got to worry about it. We going to go crazy. So, hey, let's hope so. Let's hope that Rich Eisen is right on this and and the Bears do surprise to that level. But I guess we'll see, man. But with that said, I do got one voicemail bag that I want to get into. This one's from the general, Brandon L. Jett. We're going to go ahead and play that, and I'll talk about it afterwards. Yo, what's going on, Hayes? It's Brandon L. Jett, the general here. Uh, this is the second part of my mailbag coming up. Uh, the first part was specifically for Bobby and C-Dub about the Bears' defense. This one is specifically for you, Hayes, in regards to the Bears' offense. I'm going to break it down into each level. Which level of the offense do you think needs to be the most consistent in order for the Bears' offense to be a, a respectable offense? And what I mean by respectable, I mean, anywhere between top 10 and 15, is it, is it number one, the offensive line's protection, meaning the uncertainty with Nate Davis and how he actually plays. We have no idea who, who is going, going to be the starting center with Coleman Sheldon or Doug Kramer. And will Tevin Jenkins stay healthy? And will Braxton Jones be more consistent? Will it be number two? a running back core, and their performance. Given that the Bears have DeAndre Swift, they have Roshan Johnson, they have Khalil Herbert. We don't know if Khalil Herbert is going to stay on the team the entire season. Will it be their performance? Will it be the wide receiver, number three, the wide receiver, and the tight end course production? Meaning, I don't really need to speak on DJ Moore. We already know what he brings to the table. Will it be Kenan Allen? Will he be able to stay healthy the entire season? We know that he has had, had some nagging injuries in the past. What will we get out of Rome year one as he's learning the offense as well as the NFL? And number four, I call it with Caleb Williams, his patience. Um, it may take him a while to actually get used to the NFL, modern-day offense, um, and Shane Waldron's uh, play scheming. So I ask this question, which level of the Bears offense needs to be the most consistent? Is it the offensive line's protection? Is it the running back's performance? Is it the wide receivers and tight ends production? Or is it the quarterback and um, Caleb Williams' patience? Let me know what you think. Thanks, and I appreciate everything that y'all do. Bear down. All right, Brandon, so to answer your question, which one do I need to be more consistent? I mean, easily is to say quarterback play, right? That's the kind of the easy answer when it comes to offenses. You want your quarterback play to be consistent. You want that. But I really look at it as this offensive line. Like, we, I think that we have enough talent that even if Caleb Williams goes through some, you know, tri trials and tribulations, like, but you want that offensive line to give him enough time to process that. And we've already heard that Caleb Williams processing and reading of defenses is, is reportedly well advanced of where it needs to be and, and where it was initially to start. But I think that the, the mixture of the two, because I, I maybe I'm, I'm overzealous, right, or maybe I, tr I trust too much, but I trust the wide receivers to do what they need. We got veterans there, even with Romo Dunze as the rookie there. I trust the tight ends. We got veteran tight ends and Cole Komet, Gerald Everett. I trust them to do what they need to do. And I think we got running backs that as long as they stay healthy, right, that they're going to take care of the business that they need to take care of as well. So if you're looking at the two things that I need to be consistent with play, the quarterback play, right, and Caleb Williams is going to go through his ups and downs. He's going to have his mistakes. He's going to go th grow through them, which we need to see, and that offensive line because so much starts with that offensive line before the quarterback can do anything, right? So those two things, I think, are, are 1A, 1B to me. 
We need that quarterback play. We need Caleb Williams. Everything that we've heard about him and the way he reads defenses, the way he processes, all those type of things, we need that to be 100% legit. We need that to be legitimate. And I don't have any, I haven't seen anything to say that it won't be, but we need that to be, and we need the offensive line to stay healthy and to be consistent in what they're able to do. We didn't get to see a lot of continuity with that offensive line because we had members either out for personal reasons, injuries, whatever it was, all up and down last season. But if we can get a relatively healthy season from Tevin Jenkins, we can get Nate Davis to stay locked in, which reportedly he has been so far in training camp. We get Darnell Wright to take a step. Coleman Shelton, Ryan Bates, either one of those guys, again, competency at that center play. And if Braxton Jones, I would even say this, even if Braxton Jones stays pretty much with what he's been but eliminates the penalties, that's something as well that just goes a long way in getting the Chicago Bears where they need to be offensively. So to answer your question, the offensive line, the quarterback play, those are the two things I'm specifically looking at that I want to see be much better for the Chicago Bears team, much more consistent. And I think that, uh, listen, and again, this isn't to knock Justin, this isn't to do anything like that, but it's just to be real. Us having more competent and, and consistent quarterback play as far as the processing, keeping the turnovers down, things like that, that would eliminate a lot. It's not all on that because we still need that offensive line. We still need wide receivers who aren't going to drop the ball and perform. But I look at those two things, and if those two things are legit for the Bears, I think this offense is going to be tremendous, Brandon L. Jett. But you guys can let me know how you guys feel on that down below, man. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270. I'm sorry, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And like I like to end every episode on, Shy Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.